At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programmes offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. Public courses are delivered in London, New York and Singapore. Our teachers are leading experts in their fields with a wealth of practical knowledge. They are skilled communicators who can get the message across quickly and effectively. Leonard Matz is a liquidity risk consultant with over 15 years experience in senior risk management roles in US banks. He is a leading author in the field of liquidity management and ALM and has advised banks in six continents on liquidity risk, regulation and treasury activities. Banks, and in particular, but also their supervisors, um, have to understand that liquidity risk is, in many respects, very not very dissimilar. It's very dissimilar from the traditional rate risk and credit risk threats that banks face. Liquidity stress for a financial institution um, is, first of all, what we call a consequential risk. You never see a bank that is in liquidity trouble, serious liquidity trouble, because it didn't have enough liquidity. You see a bank that's in serious liquidity trouble because of some initial problem that led to a funding disruption. I like to say to bankers that you always have too much liquidity until you don't, because as long as you have the confidence of funds providers, you always have more than you need. It's just in those very rare situations, those very low probability events, that you're suddenly in trouble. Best practices for liquidity risk were, uh, to some extent, uh, codified uh, by uh, the IIF um, in 2006 or 2007, really before the global financial crisis. A lot of these requirements were already well known at that time. So it's, it, it's reasonable to say that the compliance burden for a well-run bank should be much less than it seems because they should have been doing a lot of this already. We know all of the stress tests are wrong. The object isn't to make it more descriptive or predictive. The object is to bend the financial institution until it breaks. Because I want to learn two things. I want to learn how long did we go before we broke. That tells me a lot for balance sheet management, for planning purposes. And then the second thing I learn is where did it break? Is it breaking because we're overly relying on short-term liabilities? Or is it breaking because we have large amounts of, of off-balance sheet commitments that are highly correlated as to when they fund or under what conditions they fund? Or is it breaking because we didn't hold enough liquid assets? Under Basel II, uh, liquidity was one of the Pillar II risks. And banks were supposed to, in some um, ill-described uh, amorphous way, come up with some quantity of capital to hold against liquidity risk. It never made sense. And I'm really pleased to see Basel III carve out liquidity and treat it completely separately. The regulatory regime for liquidity is now completely separate. Regulators have traditionally said there's some risks that banks aren't allowed to take. There's some other risks that banks are expected to manage with limits and controls. But regulators don't normally get involved in pricing. For liquidity risk, starting around 2008 or so, they have said that they expect at least the large banks to be measuring the costs and benefits of liquidity for assets, for liabilities, and for off-balance sheet commitments. And the regulators have said they expect the banks to reflect these costs and benefits in internal and external prices. And so it is an extra layer of challenge, and it's no small challenge that banks have to take on. And then, of course, the banks that hadn't been transfer pricing the mismatch or current funding uh, issue have to add that as well. So it's a big, big project for uh, even the um, best-run banks and an even bigger project for those that are lagging behind. This LFS course covers liquidity management, scenario stress testing, contingency planning, and transfer pricing for liquidity risk. Practical examples and Excel spreadsheets illustrate how to apply the concepts in the real world.
The course um, is primarily addressing three subjects. One of them is stress testing. We're going to discuss scenario selection and definition. We're going to discuss scenario characteristics, uh, degrees of severity or, or stress levels. But a good amount of time in the course on the stress test portions will be spent using an actual stress test model. A second part of the class is going to, or the course is going to focus on contingency, contingent risk, contingency planning, and the connections between contingent risk management and stress testing and balance sheet management. And the third and final part of the course focuses on the uh, transfer pricing for liquidity risk. Um, we're going to talk about first the um, the method that is used to transfer price the, um, the current uh, funding costs of the bank. I will be discussing the standard practices. I'll be discussing some of the challenges associated with those. And we're going to work through a couple of exercises um, to actually you know, apply them in to some practical examples. The second part of the pricing, though, is the contingent standby. Um, there's nothing even there that, that would be described as standard practice, let alone best practice. So I'm going to just um, introduce two or three um, of the uh, what I consider to be the better methods that are being implemented by financial institutions, and we'll also work through um, a couple of exercises. The primary uh, audience for the course is generally the individuals in the bank. Uh, they may be part of Treasury or they may be uh, part of a separate uh, risk control or risk management function in the bank who are uh, responsible for measuring, monitoring, reporting, and managing liquidity risk on the balance sheet. Also occasionally uh, we see regulators. Um, sometimes they're the uh, field examiners, uh, more often they're the capital market specialists. Experience levels uh, are anywhere from you know, 3 to 20 years. The big piece that I think is really important now is an understanding of the connection between the stress testing, the contingency planning, and the balance sheet management. These are all really three moving parts in one risk management operation. So they're managing the cash flows, they're managing the liquid assets, they're managing the off-balance sheet commitments, and they're managing the planning, all in ways that the, the stress tests show are helpful.